a video from a very long time ago. I found it at random. Fox News covered it. It's dumb that they did this. Now what you're seeing is a Leviathan coming out of the mist. But we're in an airplane flying, so there's that. So anyway, thanks to the direction of flight, it appears to be a giant dark rotating cigar-shaped shaft uh, craft, or it's rotating on its axis. Uh, Corfu, Greece, Camera Works owner Kerry Forides was a passenger flying over the Aegean Sea at around 4.30 p.m. when he saw an ascending airplane exhaust trail. So. March 21st, 2018. He uploaded it as Carrie Camera Works, what UFO is this? Underscore yes. Share. And then please refer to Carrie Camera Works. Okay. Now, here's the problem. If you watch this video, and I'm going to leave a link to it on purpose, you will notice that a person who runs a camera works place, presumably he knows how to use a camera and would have a good quality camera and you could use fixed focus. It's actually just using a cell phone that auto-refocuses on the wrong thing, the window. Now, I don't know about you, but the first thing I'd want to do if I was ever going to have to deal with a camera, if I was a camera aficionado or you know, camera snob or literate about them, it's like with computers, I immediately alter what I have. When I had a cell phone, I turned off autofocus. I made, it, made sure I got an app so I had to focus on the screen because it was a touch screen for the short period of time I used it. What we're seeing is, from this perspective, very likely a plane coming up out of the atmosphere, lower atmosphere, up and above the cloud layer, and flying away from us at this point. Planes can move relative to each other, and more importantly, um, they change altitude. So let's look at the next image. Okay, here we go. It was there. Now we're going here. Now, if we consider the blooming part to be behind the aircraft since it would also cover up the aircraft so we couldn't really see it early on, then f f progressing through time from here to here means that we're moving relative to it to its left and behind it. We're behind it. You notice the part of the aircraft directly in front of you. And there it is, like a leviathan. It's turning around. or it's, it's, It looks like it's tilting, but it's literally just us flying past it. Right now we're lined up with it. At 4.30 p.m., you know, Greek time. Now this is when the person who's using the camera phone zoomed in. Okay? They didn't say hit the don't change your focus, you piece of junk button. I want you to look at the edge or the forward edge of the plane right here. Just, it's right here. That's the forward edge of the plane wing. Presumably. I mean, I could be totally wrong here. Now, Let's go forward a little bit. We're still looking over the wing. Now we're getting more and more straight lined with it. And now we see this. Obviously it's not a solid object. It is a vapor trail, or more accurately, a smoke trail. They probably had an engine that was running too rich, or it wasn't getting enough oxygen intake through one engine, it looks like. But it could be anything. And we notice how the zoom in is very carefully you know, I'm taking images here that aren't blurry. It constantly goes in and out. Someone gets in front of the camera, but you, you know, people are crowded on an airplane, that sort of thing. And there's our trail. And that shows you how far away that freaking airplane has to be. Practically sky riding. Now we see it in the new perspective further on in the video. And the part we were looking at, looking over the engine pod or whatever it was on the front of the airplane, is way over here. So we're now going past it. It's not going parallel or following each other. Well, they're kind of going parallel. You notice the trail has you know, broken up over a distance. Or more accurately, we're going into a slow turn because look at the extreme background here. Okay, we're not seeing a lot of changes, but the cloud cover change is changing. It's very fluffy in the background, broken up. Let's go back again. You notice how flat line it was? And then on the right-hand side there, just on the edge, you start seeing a little bit of breakup of the clouds. Then they zoom in. And now we're at the point you can see it having a termination to this black cloud layer. That means it's going from rich, probably gunning the engine to get up in the atmosphere and get into the uh, proper pathway, to producing normal vapor. And you can see further out on the wing here. So they were aiming this way, and now they've just passed it. 
meaning they were looking up this way, almost parallel with the airplane, through the glass, which is probably the reason it was badly focusing. We're going faster than it because it's doing an inefficient high altitude, I mean high gain or high angle fly up to get above the, pl the clouds so they can do a visual only fly so they don't run into a mountain or something because there's a lot of mountains out there. But that means that definitively we have gone into a pathway where we're parallel with them and they could have turned towards us or we could have turned towards them. It's all relative and these things operate in three dimensions. And now we're pointing down at the body of where the part of the plane again. No step on snake. And then we get a zoom out where we see context. The person pulled away from the window. Then you can see how hard they had to be putting the camera right here and looking straight out through the glass at an angle. That's an unusually clean window. And that's the video. And during this entire time, a person who at least is supposed to be cognizant of how cameras work, apparently it's him recording it, did not force it into auto focus off so we could get something real. And the forced perspective effect of that means that this was very much forward of them when they first started it. So it went from this nearly forward of them, fairly close, to them flying over the pathway and going around and curving the same pathway, which means they were on the same, uh, well, air pathway. They were flying the same skies. They were going, you can see how harsh the angle is? But for all the zoom in and out and blurring and the bad focus, you can't tell. And the guy wants us to promote <clears throat> carry camera works, UFO sighting, or you're just not using the camera phone by turning off its autofocus and holding it still. And okay, I'm going to be insulting the guy a little bit, but not really. This is a cool video, and he was obviously promoting his, his company. And I can't find it when I look up Corfu Grease and look up carry camera works. So he needs to fix his search engine optimization. Please provide a link because I would like to link to your company. That's cool. I mean, this is kind of promotional, all that, obviously. But really, this is a camera guy who can't force the cell phone to not autofocus and screw up a perfectly good video. Which means, which means even a camera expert can't make a cell phone video su not suck. It's not his fault. If he had a real camera, he'd be sitting there. It'd be rock steady and perfect, I'm sure. So again... Friends don't let friends use cell phones to do UFO videos, please, for God's sake. Or maybe he was doing it in, you know, wink, with a wink and a nudge. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. All credit due to him. This is only using X number of frames out of the video, just so that we can force perspective that rotational effect to show that this was a forced perspective effect. Good day. Good luck. Goodbye.